Hello Chargers, we are Team Core United. Our team consists of builder Aiden and programmer Jishuan. This is the current state of our robot. We'll start off by talking about hardware. For this section, we'll be focusing on the changes we made to the U19 robot that was part of building in 2020. We understood the strengths and weaknesses of the robots as it had won both the Singapore Open and the Asia Pacific competitions. Overall, there were five main changes that we made. These are the claw bracing, using ball bearings to weigh down the grab and lift mechanism, changing the high friction element on the claw from Lego rubber pieces to foam tape, and changing from an EV3 to high technique color sensor for the middle, making the robot's width smaller. <coughs> We also improved on adding 3D printed components to decrease our robots width even more and uh, mounted our color sensor at a better angle using a 3D printed part. The first change we made was to replace the Lego rubber pieces with foam tape. While the rubber pieces would work well, when the ball and cube were perfectly centered at, at the base of the claw, the grip was unstable when the objects were not in the ideal position or con con orientation. We figured out that the root cause of this was because of the objects had different shapes and using a hard claw would not fit those shapes well. Instead, we should use something that is soft and can wrap around to fit the shape of the object. We experimented with foam tape and found that the grip was more stable as it would conform to the shape of the object, increasing the surface area no matter how the object was oriented. With the foam tape, we can now pick up any object reliably regardless of where it is in the claw. The second change is the color sensor. We changed it to a high technique color sensor as the range of the EV3 Lego sensor was not high enough. It would still sense an object even if it was not perfectly aligned. So, we used a high technique color sensor as it had longer range and had better color recognition than a normal one. One of the main problems experienced last year was the robot's width. In the Asia-Pacific map shown in the slide, there are two sections where the line came close to the wall. In those cases, the robot's width was too wide and hit the wall repeatedly. Either reducing the efficiency of the robot when in line jerks or entirely forcing the robot off the line. After realizing the issue, we changed our robot's width from 22cm to 17cm. We did this by reducing the amount of beams we used on the wheel brace, making it one beam wide. Additionally, we changed the weights of the claw, which we will talk about next. Next, we will talk about the weights of the claw. At first, the previous weights were too bulky. This led to excess width of the robot, which was a problem as mentioned in the previous slide. Thus, we switched from tires to ball bearings. This would tilt the storage channels, allowing the balls to flow down even if they are stuck. Moreover, the ball bearings were more compact than wheels. One major issue was a robot uh, seal, was that the grab and lift gears were splitting apart when the robot was lifting the balls. Despite it being temporarily solved by adding rubber bands, it was not a permanent solution as it increased friction, making it less reliable. We needed a better solution. Hence, we cross braced the weakest part of the claw, ensuring that the gears always remained in contact when the mechanism was Dating. This proved to be a lot more reliable. 
now let me talk about claw. The claw is used for grabbing and lifting the life and dead victims and the blue cube onto the sorting mechanism. We use a grab and lift claw as we are doing level 2 blue cube collection. The level 2 blue cube collection deposit zone is 6 yen, so the claw has to lift the ball or blue cube high enough so it can be deposited. The claw is also used for funneling the items into the middle color sensor. Now I will be talking about the downward facing color sensors. They are used for line tracking and green square detection. They are spaced at a distance from each other so that when the robot is on the green squares, the sensors are directly above them. The color sensors are also spaced at a distance from the ground so that it gives it a proper reading. Now I'll be talk moving to talk about the ball and cube storage. There are two storage channels attached to the robot to separate the life and dead victims. The storage channels are slightly tilted backwards, so objects can flow back where it will be deposited. There are also independent triggers, such that when the robot reverses into the deposit zone, the triggers will be triggered and the balls and cubes in the storage channels will fall into a deposit zone. This is a sorting mechanism. As you can see, it is a medium Lego motor mounted vertically so it can rotate the two prongs and not only sort the object, but can push the object further into storage in case it gets stuck. When there's an object detector, the ultrasonic sensor will help track the object as it moves around the obstacle, as you can see in the video. Next, we'll be talking about the software which we did in Python. Now we'll be moving on to the sensor calibration part. Before calibration, both color sensors kept on returning different values even when they are sensing the same color. Thus, we added code so that the color sensor returns 0% when above black and 100% when above white. For line tracking, we implemented proportional line tracking. After calculating the error between the left and right downward facing color sensors, the robot will turn the amount of error. So, if there is more error, the robot turns more. I will now be moving on to our green square detection. Previously, the robot constantly mistakes the black line as a green square, as both values are quite similar. Our solution was to increase the black threshold. We also realized the green squares always appear at the sections. Thus, when both left and right sensors sense double black, the robot reverses and checks for green squares. The robot senses silver tape when the downward-facing car sensors return values that are greater than calibrated white values. The robot also senses the red line when sensor percentage red, which is the red value divided by the sum of the red, green, and blue values. At first, there was a problem with the obstacle avoidance, where if we use a LEGO Mindstorms color sensor, the robot might not be able to sense the obstacle in time and when turning, the robot would hit the obstacle. Knowing this problem, we used the High Techniques color sensor by increasing the range of sensing. The sensor would also be able to sense the obstacle and turn in time, avoiding hitting the obstacle. To avoid the obstacle, the High Techniques color sensor first senses the obstacle from a distance. An ultrasound sensor is then mounted onto the side of the robot to measure the distance from the robot and obstacle. The higher the value of the distance, the more the robot turns towards the obstacle. This will allow the robot to go around the obstacle in a curved motion and will go back to the line of obstacle avoidance. Next, we'll be talking about the silver align. Robot, our robot was entering at a different angle every time and hence letting our event code not run properly. Hence, now we created the silver align function which waits for left and right sensor to both send silver. It then reverses and then rotates around the sensor that was on the silver line to the opposite sensor also senses the silver line. This ensures that both sensors sense silver and makes it a much more reliable uh, sensing and enters the evac zone at a straight angle. Next, we'll be talking about the evacuation zone. We had used the spiral searching method to sense balls. The robot will move around in a part space spiral wave by maintaining a certain distance from the wall using an ultrasound sensor. This is the same as how we did obstacle avoidance. The robot will pick up balls as it moves. The robot would check for evacuation points in each of the corners of the evacuation. If one is present, the balls will be deposited in. 
If the sensor senses white in front of it, it will pick the line between up and sort it into the sorting channel. And if the sensor detects black, it will pick the dead between up and sort it into the sorting channel. If the sensor senses blue, it will pick the rescue kit up and sort it. The way we deposited the balls in the cube is through a trigger mechanism, where when the trigger is pressed, the storage tips backwards, allowing gravity to let them fall. Thank you.